sorry, that was uh, the mic in, is uh, in the wrong position. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, the lonely, the lonely taxi out on his own, probably uh, been a long time since uh, he's been given the opportunity to go straight out without having to wait. He's on his own, folks. We've had some departures. Uh, can't believe he's actually waiting. Oh, there's a rogue, that's why. Can you believe it? Um, so while we're waiting for that, we do have a, uh, a rogue um, arrival coming in on uh, 09. We're still on 09 operations. As you can see, they're starting to, uh, they're starting to park aircraft up. Uh, that is Taxiway Sierra folks which is normally used in the opposite direction for aircraft going out on uh, on 09 operations of course um, Virgin parking up a couple of their aircraft down there whether that's um, out, out, out of request from uh, the airport authorities oh, I, I don't know but obviously if you, if you remember yesterday when we were here two aircraft parked up uh, with Virgin Atlantic uh, down there and that uh, in those off-stand locations um, one of uh, Virgin's 350s parked up off-stand there now whether these aircraft are going to end up with engine covers over them uh, I don't know uh, I can't see any reason why they wouldn't uh, unless they're going to be um, uh, put into service um, Here we have uh, Emirates A380 pushing back for uh, for departure. Much the same sort of like uh, setup as it was yesterday in terms of aircraft on the ground. Um, interesting to see a uh, BEA, um, the little BEA 319 retro jet over there with British Airways. More stored 319 and 320 uh, single aisle aircraft over there. We do have uh, in town right now, uh, we do have the Green Liner. Uh, now, um, a lot of you folk uh, who are regular with us and have seen, uh, have seen our Manchester uh, shows, you would have seen the Green Liner going out of Manchester. Uh, that's the um, Etihad Dreamliner, uh, of, um, which Etihad have introduced as their um, most eco-friendly bio type uh, aircraft now I don't believe it's running on biofuels at this stage but they are just talking about uh, maximizing the uh, the recycling and, uh, and use of recyclable goods on board that aircraft so that's something that we're going to be catching in a short while um, amazing to uh, see that this uh, this United Dreamline has taxied out there all the way down there only to have to wait for a rogue arrival uh, this looks like this will probably be from somewhere like Edinburgh or Leeds or or um, oh it's from Prague is it okay <laughs> I'll get I'll, I'll get me coat oh did they now okay for what reason just for storage, perhaps, or is it going to be put into operation? I don't know. So now, here we go. Uh, I nearly said Continental again. How many years have I been doing this? <laughs> just, uh, it's just uh, ingrained in my brain, I guess, uh, from back in the old Continental days before they became uh, United States. Yeah. Um, clearly see the, um, how flat the wing is, uh, much like a 777, uh, but it's obviously built up speed, quite blustery up here it has to be said, quite a, a nippy breeze, but obviously better conditions than yesterday. So we've got the what looks like the retro Lingus going out as well, which is good. 
nice to see. So I think uh, United is rolling. Is it? Okay. Aer Lingus from Belfast, rogue arrival. What, coming in or? Is it? Oh, sure. Well, it doesn't matter if she doesn't because we'll see her. She'll... Really? Oh, that's fantastic. But if he doesn't go rogue, it doesn't matter because he'll come all the way up here and taxi. He'll taxi past us. So get a good look at him. There's that wing flexing up already, folks. All carbon, uh, carbon woven fuselage as well, don't forget. Somewhere in the region of 70%. Um, look at the wing flexing there. Outboard of the engines, as you can see. I said yesterday, look at the fact that you've got the um, the ailerons outboard on the wing, uh, as well as the flapperons uh, just behind, directly behind the engines. And of course the... Um, I don't know, I can't remember whether they're Gen X type engines or... Uh, He's just landed. Blimey, that was, uh, he just appeared out of nowhere. Is that a uh, jumbo jet taxiing out down there? It is. Oh, look at this. Is this SAS's Neo, perhaps? Yes. Yeah. SAS, new livery Neo, but we saw very, uh, didn't see very much of it yesterday. Um, but hey, you know, London Heathrow still, still active. Um, just looking at Concord there, folks. Um, we're going to be bringing you a special show this afternoon, so stay tuned uh, to your devices or whatever you watch on uh, Big Jet TV um, this afternoon. Going to be bringing you two uh, episodes. Firstly, the uncut um, as live uh, show from Brooklands uh, with uh, the Concord there. And then, um, and then the edited version, the fully edited version, after, straight after that. So, um, more to come uh, after this uh, small segment. I thought we'd just come up here, see what, see what, uh, what the latest is. I'm going to go uh, mobile uh, after the next couple of departures when these, uh, when the 380 and the 747. And that, uh, that um, well, we've got probably more actually after that. So when I find a window of opportunity, I will, um, yeah, here she comes. This is Etihad's uh, coming in rogue. Etihad 777-300. Uh, she is, this is the old livery that we're seeing coming in now. So, uh, wow. That is one light aeroplane right there. That can't have been more than 200, 300 yards. That thing went up in with a intersecting departure as well. Minor. Be good, be good. saying that they're going to be uh, 
minimising the operations into the uh, left-hand runway, 09 left, which is the normal arrivals runway for, um, for 09 operations. But uh, I think they might be bringing more and more stuff in on this, uh, this right-hand runway. Lots and lots of freight I've seen this morning uh, going out by truck here at London Heathrow. Lots of activity, uh, perishable goods, which is a good thing. It has to be said, um, you know, it's a double-edged sword scenario that we have uh, currently here in the UK. I don't know what's happening elsewhere in the world, but um, some, some, some crazy behavior going on in the, uh, in the grocery stores here in the UK, folks. Um, most distressing, it has to be said, more so uh, for the for the elderly folk, and uh, most definitely for those uh, ladies and gents who are working in the health service, uh, don't get an opportunity to go out and work uh, uh, shop during the day, coming home six, seven o'clock at night to go to their local store only to find the shelves absolutely bare, completely bare, bare, and uh, it is um, it is disheartening, I have to say, and embarrassing. Uh, if anything. The problem with it is, is that people go in there, they see this panic buying and they feel, well, I better buy as much as I can because otherwise when I come in tomorrow, it'll all be gone. That's not the case, folks. They're restocking every single day. You do not have to buy um, excessive amounts. But the good thing is that now finally, uh, it's me, it has reached the mainstream media, you know, uh, with, with the TV um, and the media um, really grabbing hold of it and hopefully doing something about it. I would say that the, um, you know, the, the, uh, the management at these uh, large organizations such as Tesco's and Sainsbury's and all those, uh, uh, all the other mainstream supermarkets, need to, you know, pull their finger out, uh, have crisis meetings. I know they've um, they've uh, implemented a maximum three item, uh, which is crazy. It's crazy when you think about it. I mean, we're talking about wartime sort of like uh, wartime scenario here uh, with rationing, but uh, a maximum of three items per customer. Um, of course, the cash out staff, when you've got 20 um, uh, self-service tills, and the cash out uh, and the cash out self service staff being like one person looking after 20 tills that's very difficult to police of course um, but uh, very very concerning for a lot of people and um, you do not need to panic by folks there is enough um, there is enough as you can see these guys down here um, all carrying per perishable goods um, from from around the world this got this cargo coming in uh, belly freight and also dhl bringing stuff in as well although dhl is mainly uh, e-commerce but uh, do not panic folks it, you do not need to worry there will not be well there is a shortage at the, at, in, in some places oh, easy stuff. easy but really guys and girls um you know, I can understand somebody going into their local store and seeing empty shelves and thinking, right, well, sod it. You know what? If they're going to do that, then I'm going to do it. Um, and that just, it just, it just, it snowballs into a, um, into a, into a, into a situation where everyone starts buying uh, beyond uh, their requirements. I just cannot understand it, though, why so much... Uh, so many vegetables and um, and, and fruit um, have been overbought. I just don't understand it because it's perishable goods, isn't it? You know, are people freezing this stuff or what? You know, it's um, what happened? What? What? What's happened, Jilly?
call, Jilly. Don't call. Going to go on. Uh, going to go on to. Going to jump back onto the um, uh, Bluetooth in a second. Got something wrong with that phone. Stand by. to Dubai perhaps no nope, here we go is the right hand bank now that'll be uh, that'll be US bound Boston or uh, New York or some JFK or something like that And said you have used all, all, all uh, uh, used to all of your available. Oh, okay. Wow, look at this! Look at this! Three aircraft on the active runway. some comments. Wow, it's quite late going out, isn't he? Because he did an intercept. I think this might be the uh, Russian 321. We've got Etihad's uh, green liner going out. Wakey, wakey. 
Peggy. Okay, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go to. Uh, I'm gonna go to uh, Main Mike GP standby. Because I've pulled it out. That's because I pulled it out. Um, right. Backpack going on the back. Just check your picture. Check your picture. Keep your eye on the picture. Good. Good. Everything okay? Right. Okay. I'm just going to jump on the chat here. Here comes your, uh, sorry folks, multitask. So this is SAS's uh, Neo in the uh, new livery, but we're not going to see any of it. Highly unlikely, because she's going to be way up high by the time we... Uh... So the best we will have seen of her will have been just now when she was taxiing. So. That goes to this. This goes to show what uh, the airline industry is doing for the for for, for the um, for ecology, um, eco for being eco-friendly as much as they can. Listen to those engines. Whisper jet. That's a real whisper jet. That is. Yeah, another Virgin going over for storage. Yeah. Okay, Emirates 380 out to Dubai, uh, on the roll. Look at that wing, folks, and put that in your mind. And next time you see an eagle or a large bird of prey in flight, um, then just check the wing out and then look at that in comparison to it. Uh, I think you'll find. See, there's that upward uh, angled attitude, that flying attitude. Always flies at a certain degree of nose up attitude. Uh, just to maintain the uh, flow of air over the over and under the wing, equalising the. Uh... Wow, here we go, look. Oh, same thing. Yeah. It's quite unusual for them to. Uh... Usually they're straight out. Second rear climb there. So another Virgin, uh, another Virgin Jet 330 being towed down to, probably being towed down, is it? No, that's because she has to have her transponder on when she's being towed, I think. Has he got a destination then? So this will be carrying a... Uh, Wow, look how quickly she's gone up, mate. Yeah, yeah. 
that's the kind of uh, runway length that you know get from a 320 or a single aisle jet so uh, either he's carrying a load of belly freight and very empty going out wherever he's going to already very high Don't forget, folks, bottom right-hand side of your screen, Hilton Garden Inn is where we're at. A uh, big shout-out to Richard and all the folks at Hilton Garden Inn working very, very hard as well to, uh, to maintain um, a smiley face here at Hilton Garden Inn. Of course, the, the majority of the, the, the hotels around uh, London and Heathrow um, just being uh, used more so for... Um, air crews uh, rather than obviously holiday makers a uh, couple of stragglers hanging around hanging around um, jumping on some comments now folks welcome everybody hope you're well hope everybody's holding up So what could we say about the Eco Dreamliner? Um, probably a few of you are already uh, Googling it. Uh, Etihad Airways and Boeing um, uh, have actually gone in, in conjunction on this one together, an Eco partnership. Uh, this is a specially themed Boeing 787 Dreamliner. Uh, and it's being used to test products, procedures and initiatives designed to reduce co aircraft carbon emissions. So it's an ongoing um, live test bed here on uh, with Etihad. So I can just bring in there three. I'm going to go mobile in a, in a short while, folks. Um, okay, okay. So a little bit more about this. Uh... Oh, look at that cat art. Is that their trip? It is indeed. It is. So I think uh, I saw two Qatar tall tales uh, when I drove past T4 uh, around about 30 minutes ago. So Qatar, probably longer than that actually. Um, so I call this the, um, the soft mint uh, variant of Etihad's Dreamliner fleet. Blended blue-green design for the themed aircraft was unveiled uh, at the 2019 uh, Dubai International Air Show. Um, Air shows, uh, hearing of um, hearing reports that um, a number of air shows have been cancelled already. It does confuse me a little bit as to why they're cancelling air shows that are not due to uh, due until sort of like August, September time, uh, even July, because. It must be something down to ticket sales because one would expect that with the stringent measures that are being undertaken um, that the whole virus thing will be under control by, uh, by the end of April, I would have hoped, uh, uh, maybe even, well, well, by the end of May, let's say. Uh, and uh, of course, what, what we're in at the moment is we're in, we're in the, if, if, if you take it as a... Um, we are 
currently the earth is uh, is in surgery uh, it's being operated on it's being looked after it's in, under intensive care and uh, and then once and that is by means of uh, 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 um, isolation uh, um, uh, uh, minimizing human contact which is crazy to think but uh, in order to do all of these things these these stringent measures um, mean that uh, it will speed up the process of recovery uh, one would hope and as a result of that we will need about a month or two or three to um, to bring everything back in line to get everything back to full operational capacity certainly in terms of the airline industry um, I know there's a obviously a number of people panicking um, from the airline industry you know crews and so on and so forth who are worried about their futures um, speaking to a good friend of mine yesterday uh, he hasn't got his um, his roster for April yet which by now he would have already had done but um, it's uh, it is concerning times some are in a better position than others they don't have uh, so much um, to fork out at the end of every month so they'll have a little bit more to uh, in in uh, in terms of um, reserves financially uh, which is you know a good thing for them uh, whereas for others it's not the case however I would say again not to panic too much purely because of the fact that we're all in this together guys and girls we are all in it together there's nobody exempt from uh, from this from this issue this problem even the the rich and famous are, are, will will obviously uh, be affected by this um, perhaps not so badly financially but you know in terms of um, lifestyle and just being able to uh, mingle with 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 people you know um, films being cancelled um, uh, premieres being cancelled uh, meetings being cancelled there's so much involved in it however if you think about it from the perspective of mr. Smith who has a mortgage um, and this is an example of course I don't know someone Mr. called Mr. Smith who has a mortgage um, but if you imagine as an example Mr. Smith so that's just interesting because normally these two aircraft would taxi down Sierra so they must be how are they going to get down to the operational runway we'll have to keep an eye on that um, so Mr. Smith has a mortgage you know one thing I've always believed is don't bury your head in the sand you, you, you know, and, and, I, and, I, and I don't want to, you know, um, I don't want to uh, teach people how to suck, it, suck eggs, or you know, it's not, it's not far be it from me to tell somebody uh, older than me uh, how to control their finances and so on and so forth. However, in situations like this, where we're all in the same boat, uh, if you can't afford something, then speak to the people that you pay your monthly rent to, your leasing, your mortgage, and so on and so. Forth. Just speak to them; they're there to help. And at the end of the day, uh, if you've got a, a cafe, for example, and you've got and you've had to close up shop, which is very distressing, of course, for anybody in that position. And I feel for you guys, I really do. Um, okay, so there's an access uh, taxi, there's an early uh, route taxiway, but they will have to intercept that runway. Um, again, <clears throat> speak to the people that you uh, that, 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 that have the lease on the property and uh, make arrangements so that when things come back on stream because they will folks they are going to come back on stream we're not in this forever it's not going to happen forever it you know we will control it we will find a a cure we will find a an, a, an anti um you know a vaccine that that can be taken every year much like the um like the uh the flu jabs you know all that kind of stuff uh will be under control within a couple of months two to three months um and when that happens and it starts coming on stream again and your, ca and your cafe opens up and you've got people coming in there, obviously it's going to take time for you to recoup that money that you've lost. So the people that you rent the property from or the lease company need to understand that. And the best way to deal with that is just to get on the phone to them and sort it out with them face to face, you know, or mouth to mouth on the phone. Not mouth to mouth, obviously, don't want to be doing that. Um, but, uh, you know, just speak to people that's the best way to deal with anything is get on the phone to them 
give them your predicament, tell them what situation you're in, and then, uh, you know, rather than, you know, I mean, obviously the, the government's uh, putting 34 billion pounds aside to uh, to help small businesses and the like, but um, I would have said, even though that may be the case, you might not have to borrow any money from the government if your lease company or your mortgage company or your landlord or whoever is able to work out a deal with you. You know, right, okay, so once it all gets going again, pay me back the shortfall, which is two months' rent, split that into a year, pay me a little bit extra every month, and we'll settle the balance that you owe, owe us by the end of 2022 or something like that. You know, if they get anything, they'll be happy. That's the thing. So is he going to cross the active and then taxi us? I, is he? No, he is going out intercept. That's quite good because that means that we'll have potentially a longer run out on this. English Rocker, uh, I hope you're well. Um, obviously, we know that English Rocker has been affected by the virus. Um, Stephen Owens, we are all Neo. Uh, David Taylor. <laughs> Paul MK. Oh, you can make me one, son. Uh, Kaylee Seymour, Drew Pinnock, uh, Andy M. Hope you got back all right, by the way, um, uh, um, uh, Paul. Okay. AS Travels, good day to you. Andy Sokolow, Jordan Weir, good day. So this is the green liner with Etihad, the Eco green liner, in conjunction with Boeing. First time we've seen it, at, is it the first time we've seen it at Heathrow? I don't think it, uh, it might not have been the first time it's been into Heathrow, but it's the first time that we've seen it on, on Big Jet TV. Results um, they have so far because they've obviously been operating that aircraft for a number of months now. Um, oh God, Qatar going straight out. Wow, look at this. Big, long, twisty wing on that. London. In the distance. Right, okay, so what I'm going to do now is get myself unhooked. Uh, we have a new member, Chris Horsfield. 
Welcome to Economy, Chris. Thunderbolt Dragon. Hey, hey. Welcome to First Class uh, Thunderbolt Dragon. You are more than welcome. Welcome everybody who's watching. Love Angel, good to see you uh, on the feed today. So what I'm going to do now, uh, I'm going to hold, you, hold your uh, air boss. So far, all my air shows are still on the docket. Good, good. That's good to hear. Um, we know React has uh, announced uh, cancellation, which is most unfortunate. Right, coming off mic, GP, stand by. Okay, right, are you good? So I'm, I just wanted to show the folks um, what, um, what we've got here. Uh, so we're gonna go mobile now, folks. What's that? What? Yeah, that's my camera audio, that's my camera mic. You good? You happy? Yes, yes. Uh, saw one this morning. So we have to obviously uh, go the right route. Now, I just wanted to show you the boys and girls an interesting sight that's. Um... Oh. Oh, hold on. <laughs> oh, I forgot the phone, and I. Sorry, Chili, I walked off without the phone. <laughs> Why, you little stupid boy. Right, okay. I'll tell you what I am going to do. Uh... <sighs> right, uh, let me just grab this. I'm going to put this just over here. So it's right in the corner there away from the wind. Grab the phone. Back we go. Okay, everybody all right? <laughs> go for a little walk. <laughs> Come on in. Do what? The, the Italians what? Blimey, I don't know. I don't know. There's Wembley in the distance there, folks. For people who are familiar with uh, Wembley. It's a famous... Uh, that's how close we are to North London. The arch, which uh, was, funny enough, was... was uh, nobody could quite understand it, because it, when it was designed, it looked like the roof was supposed to close. <laughs> but it never did. The Aussies built that, didn't they? They were only like three years late. Too much time down the pub, mate. Crikey. Right, so what we're doing here is we're going inside the bowels of the, uh, of the building, crossing out over to... Okay, but no, no, we're coming out over the other side. Now, this is what I wanted to show you. Look at this, folks. When have you ever seen a picture like that, eh? Isn't that insane? Look at that. Look at, you can really see the difference in the size of the engines there with that 777 and that 747. But look at that. Look at all those beautiful aircraft. British Airways... Uh, flagships just uh, parked up such a fine tolerance is on these engines that the uh, that the engines will spin that's the wind purely the wind that's causing that windmilling action uh, on those engines interesting to see he's got his uh, he's um he's got his slats deployed on that one there but uh, yeah a great shame indeed Beautiful, beautiful 747. As seen from above, it's not something that you get to see very often, is it? But there you go. I just wanted to show you that, folks, because uh, that's obviously... And this is all of British Airways maintenance around here. Very hard work, hard, big, hard-working force. Now, over there, for us, uh, for you, um, for you uh, historical... Um, uh, 
bunch amongst us. Got 747 going out. Uh, that's the old hangar. Uh, which is actually um, it's got a uh, it's got a preservation order on it you can't they can't touch it so they've had to that that frontage on that hangar there is actually um, bolted onto the front of the old hangar um, so uh, they can only uh, take triple sevens and dreamliners in there um, and signal aisle as well but that's where the old if you see some of the old pictures where uh, Concorde used to go in there uh, VC 10s uh, 707s, but uh, she's, a, she's a beautiful old building, um, and of course all the way around here. Uh, oh, oh, Japan Airlines is just coming. Right, okay, let's go back. <laughs> Jumbo just about to go out. Oh, my nap. Right, okay. And through the outside. Right, let's get ourselves nice and easy. Take it easy. No rushing. These are all the. Uh, Air conditioning units for the for the rooms downstairs at the Hilton Garden Inn. Got Jumbo just about to go out. Should be. Uh, we've got Japan Airlines. Is he coming out or is he just coming? He must be going out because he's actually. Uh, going out, yeah. Oh, is he? Okay. Haneda, right? Okay. Yeah, I know he's rolling now. I'm going to have to go ma manual on this. Let's see if I can get it as well as Jay gets it. Jay, the manual man from... Uh... Right, this is handheld. Not on the sticks. For a 57-year-old, is it, eh? My old hands are doing all right. Good job I ain't got the shakes, innit? Oh, really good, mate. Yeah, that's great, that is. Yeah, brilliant. Well done. <laughs> no! Right. Okay, so um, now, well, what have we got? Let's uh, talk to a few people. <sighs> Bring the sticks back in, please. Say it back in. Mate, you don't need to. Guys, keep your money for yourselves, man. You know, you never know when you might need it. But thank you, Mike. Young man. Young man! Okay, let's, uh, right, there we go. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Stuart Ross. Um, 
Yeah, there we go. Uh, Mike Evans, great job, both Jerry, Jerry and Jilly. Thanks for the distractions. Uh, Mike, my absolute pleasure. That's why I've... Uh, have we have we have we done a day yet since I've been back from America without streaming? <laughs> have I had a, a non-streaming day yet? I don't think I have, have I? Um, might have to have a day off on Sunday if that's all right with you folks. But to be honest with you, even though I know it's uh, it's quite it's it's quite you know, I, I feel like I'm missing you guys and like I need to I need to stay in touch with you and I need to because this is an opportunity for us all to come together. Um, so. Uh, like we're going to do this afternoon with the Concord piece. Um, it's just an opportunity for us to all come together. Thanks, Stephen Richards. Jane Beret, locomotive. Jeffrey Orvis. Um, when did they start using winglets? Wow, a long time ago, my friend. Well, sharklets were the first ones, actually. Um, A330 would have been, I think, mind you, 747. 400 uh they were the first to use the um so take the what's the oldest 747 in the skies 747 400 that is 27 years ago maybe how old are, what's the oldest 747 400 flying at the moment i think they introduced the winglet the the, the shark clip or the uh, or the or the winglet should i say 747 and the A330, perhaps. So KLM obviously operating the oldest... Uh... Of course, the 777... 300 runs a uh, runs a raked wingtip which is basically an extension uh, and of course the new design the newly developed uh, 777x um, realizing that they would want a more uh, a, a, a more a better functioning wing to accommodate the big engines um, they obviously uh, invested in the uh, the new um, uh, uh, retractable winglet can you believe it uh, like an old aircraft carrier type winglet um, adds another I think it's about 11 feet on the end of every wing but the old sharklet um, you can see the old style original style that Airbus introduced and those two um, uh, winglets that you can see there um, aren't they beautiful that's that's that that's the blended wing tip right there uh, that you're seeing which is um, it is a it's a bolt-on obviously but it is a you know an extension of the wing but it is a blended piece of uh, of architecture as i call it and of course as you can see there the boeing 747 isn't she beautiful man isn't she beautiful please let's just keep a few of them flying in the skies whilst all this bull crap is going on uh, there you see the old stuff Oh, okay. Interesting. Pakistan Retro is two out. Okay, so there we have uh, a couple. Is it? Okay, so a big shout out to all the boys and girls up there in the control tower as, as well. Uh, obviously facing uncertainty. However, I would imagine uh, that it, it, there will never be a time when Heathrow will be closed uh, full stop. I don't think they're going to draw a line underneath it. Uh, obviously, it will go down to a single runway operation at some point in time, I'd imagine. Um, it may not. It may not. But I think they do have um, plans afoot for, uh, for bringing that into effect if needs be. Uh, quite a quite a simple switch over obviously but um, I'm guessing this is all going to be down to um, the um, the, uh, 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 the the storage uh, for British Airways of their fleet and uh, just how much um, capacity they're going to be requiring uh, and um, real estate in terms of being able to park up like I mentioned yesterday a number of a number of airfields, redundant airfields in the UK that have the capability of um, uh, accepting 
um, small single aisle aircraft. Obviously they don't have an ILS, so the conditions would have to be favorable for them. Um, places like um, uh, that's an interesting. Is that, uh, that is Qantas parked up at remote. That's an interesting place for the uh, 380 to be parked. Has to be said. Yeah, some airfields. Most of the single airfields um, do not have ILS uh, op operations. I think Bristol does. Um, but some of the scrapyards, I'm hearing that some of the scrapyards in the UK that are usually used for disposal of aircraft when they reach the end of life um, are actually switching their operation uh, because they're. Um, Interesting to hear it, Bike 747 on radar. Is that on radar out there coming out? Um, but yes, a number of uh, different uh, smaller airfields in the UK that have operational uh, runways uh, or, or an operational runways, uh, a, a runway, um, are, uh, are actually, um, I wouldn't say benefiting, but as it is th at the moment, a lot of these scrapyards. Um, they are uh, they, they, they they strip the aircraft and um, and obviously when they buy an aircraft, let's just say for example an A320, buy it for a couple of million, um, and then they strip the aircraft. They they, they make their money back on the spares uh, that come off of that aircraft. Sometimes it's without the engines. The engines will go back to the uh, donor, um, i.e. the airline that donated the aircraft, uh, sold the aircraft on. Um, uh, there's, uh, there, there, it's, it's, it, there's, there's a lot to it, basically. But as it is at the moment, a lot of these uh, 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 facilities are not able to... Um, are not able... Wow, look at that. Is that PIA's retro? Wow, nice. Look at that. Uh, so, so a lot of these airfields are being used for parking aircraft, for storage. So the likes of EasyJet, uh, possibly Ryanair, uh, a lot of the regional airlines are uh, obviously needing to park their aircraft um, somewhere where they're not going to pay so much money uh, because obviously parking fees at an airport like Heathrow, Gatwick, um, Stansted, Luton, etc. Uh, are going to be ex uh, excessive compared to the likes of um, of uh, somewhere like these small runways uh, that are of, of the facilities that are available uh, elsewhere in the UK. 747 inbound and something else long range over there just turning on to the uh, 777 by the looks of it, turning on to the approach for 09 left. Because of course, um, nobody's no, there's there's no demand for spare parts at the moment, really. Or should I say, the demand has dropped considerably for spare parts. So these uh, these airfields, um, actually, old airfields from um, training airfields. They are. Uh, uh, airfields that were used for ferrying aircraft back in a war um, and um, and you see them actually when you fly in over the uh, fly in over the um, west of the UK over Bristol and places like that you do see uh, you do see these airfields and a number of these people will be seeing aircraft starting to uh, be stored at these facilities for the time being um, until obviously uh, we're back in operation. Let's hope that's sooner rather than later, of course. So this guy opting to not use his uh, usual beaming taxi lights. Well, 
as he scored down. Is it BA triple seven going to Cardiff? So that would be Athen probably, would it would it be St Athen? Oh going to Cardiff. Oh just going in. Oh Cardiff maintenance. Uh, yeah, 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 that's where the uh, British Airways uh, maintenance uh, facility is down in Cardiff. So they're going to be using that extensively. So this triple seven. Uh, what, what, when's it going out? When's it going out? Is it? Oh, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. Wow. Okay. Bandito. That's interesting. I'm going to take him in there. Chris Godwin, uh, storage. Uh, what storage? Is that what that, not that jumbo? Is that jumbo gone to storage as well? Oh, TCC, New York, possibly. I don't know, I'm a little bit confused at the moment because I'm way back on the comments, I think. Uh, let me just check. Um, Chris Godwin already have two aircraft in storage. Horatio, what a beautiful shot. Martin Smith, uh, be a good time to get all those engine problems sorted out. Yes, indeed, it would do. Um, yes, most definitely. Uh, they'll still be working tirelessly on that, I'd imagine. Rolls-Royce will be um, still operating a, uh, I wouldn't have said skeleton staff, because uh, they don't have a close-knit community uh, within their facility, uh, even though... Very possibly, yes, or it might be another one. Uh, Daniel Pearson, Boscombe down a two-mile runway that could store some planes. Indeed, there you go, you see uh, old airfields that were used back in the war, um, but also um, for training and so on and so Light aircraft, um, some of these airfields are still utilised for... Um, for, play, uh, for pilot schooling and uh, so on and so forth. So, uh, obviously, those guys, um, I wouldn't like to say make hay while the sun shines because nobody wants to profit it, to profit from this terrible thing. Um, but it is just a way of surviving, I would have said, if anything, because those, air, those, those airports will probably be closing their uh, pilot schools and therefore be losing money. So uh, this is the way of 
recouping their money. East Midlands are being a perfect example of an airport that is literally closing down, um, but they will still be maintaining their, their very busy freight hub uh, and possibly be increasing their freight uh, their freight uh, movements out of East Midlands. Bandito. I mean about all the um, the uh, moving parts on the wings, folks. See the flaps and the uh, ailerons, the outboard ailerons, um, having to flex with the wing, which is incredible uh, when you consider there's so many moving components inside there, hydraulic pumps and uh, so on and so forth. Obviously, the hydraulic pump is a, a static part screws and uh, so on and so forth. Difficult to hold a tight shot just because of the, uh, the wind I have up here. So we have a repatriation. Wow, this is it. This is the storage. Triple seven headed to Cardiff. Look how quick he went up. He'll have very little fuel on board. Probably only climbed to around about 20,000 feet. I would have thought 20, 25,000 feet before he starts making his descent down into Cardiff. Right over the top of us, man. So she may be actually uh, due for a uh, due for a, a service anyway. So uh, you know, obviously an opportunity for uh, British Airways and the likes to uh, service their aircraft, clean their aircraft, write the theme tune, sing the theme tune. Ghost ship. Unprecedented times, folks. Unprecedented, whichever way it's uh, pronounced. Um, most. Uh, so, I do have a um, repatriation flight that's uh, just touched down, I believe. Let's just follow him out a little bit more. Guys are quiet. Um, don't forget, members, Big Jet TV members, uh, straight after this show, 
Uh, we're going to be, um, what we're going to be doing is, uh, oh, we've got a new member here, uh, Stuart Aslett. Uh, welcome to First Class, Stuart. Thank you for joining, my friend. Good to see you here. Alan B. Um, what's that? Fly there film, fly back in one or two days. I don't know. Uh, did I miss that? Anthony Buckley, Timmy Toothpicks. Uh, Stevie. <laughs> yeah. Laura Rivens. Uh, good to see you there. It's Martin Smith, Katie Seymour. Um, yes, indeed, Scott. Much better um, visibility today. Well, uh, 10 times better, it has to be said. Um, visibility today. Got a little dream. Oh, sorry, a little dream liner. Got a dream liner. Taxi now. Uh, Sailor Mike, uh, Craig Whitmore, and currently one movement at Birmingham now. A Jet 2737, currently one movement at Birmingham. Can you Adam and Eve it? One, Bir one movement at Birmingham. Uh, Paul Hewitt, welcome to Executive Paul. Uh, Shari Helly, I think the um, I think Ed Force One, uh, 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 the the 747 that was used for Paul, De um, Paul um, Bruce Dickinson's um, tour is actually uh, now back in service with somebody else. Uh, Novak, welcome to Economy. Uh, Saudi Arabian Airlines, I believe. Yeah, that 747. Uh, Keith Cornell, Airbus. Uh, James Harvey, TCC. Paul Skilling, good day. Um, giving a shout out to Paul and Novak. Uh, welcome to everybody who's just joined Big Jet TV. Paul 70 UK, sorry Jim. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, I've got that on the phone. Yeah, I can read that out. Okay. Never get bored of that. Is that, uh, who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Is that Cathay Pacific Triple Seven? Uh, has he just? Uh, is, he, is he just coming? Or uh, he's just coming? Yeah. We have, uh, just looking at Cardiff Airport on Flight Radar and can see the red arrows if you zoom in, uh, Stuart Sykes. Oh, okay, so that's the... Frank T, uh, good afternoon to you. So, uh, an email here from uh, one of our members uh, John Thurman, uh, I believe he's out in Australia. Um, he says here, no, it's, it's, it's quite, no, he's not. Oh, he's, he's from the UK, sorry, my apologies. Um, but he's, we're, we're, we're as, as a lot of people are aware, we have a, um, a very, uh, obviously all the pilots, um, uh, men and women who fly with British Airways, um, uh, in my eyes, uh, all deserve respect and um, and a uh, great bunch of people. Um, one of our uh, 380 skippers, Captain Dave, 
very active on social media, um, seen as a sort of like, you know, um, let's just grab this. A good representative for British Airways. Uh, we have uh, this email from this uh, chap, John Thurman, who's uh, mentioned um, somebody that I think, he, whether he knows him or not, I don't know, um, BA380 from Los Angeles on approach. Yeah, got him on the uh, on the other runway. Um, let's just quickly jump on this email so I can read it out from John Thurman. Hi, Jerry. I've been a follower of Big Jet TV for over 12 months now and a channel member for some of that time, Three Stripes now. Although I have never chipped in with the chat during the shows, as I'm usually too busy flicking between my TV screen and Flight Radar 24 on my laptop to see what is going on and where. Needless to say, uh, for a lifelong aviation fan, Big Jet TV is compulsive viewing, and as a shift worker, I'm fortunate enough to get time to watch a lot of your out put as it happens that's really good to hear uh, my reason for sending this message is that i want to you to know that how much of a positive influence you've been on my general mental health and over recent times wow uh, this is this is um, great to hear i live alone and have struggled on uh, on and off uh, uh, over many years, um, uh, as have so many people, I have to say, on Big Jet TV. Um, so you know, this is this is really good to hear that uh, that we're bringing happiness and um, uh, and and relief to a lot of people. Um, so he's very happy about the, uh, the the community but listening to you your community and banter is a real life a real uplifter on a rainy winter afternoon when i'm stuck indoors listening to a guy who's made his passion into his full-time occupation and clearly loves what he does but but presents it with such a humble and non-judgmental style is a real ray of sunshine in what i'm sure you'll agree can be pretty nasty world sometimes yes indeed I couldn't agree with you more there. Uh, don't underestimate the contribution to providing a positive influence on people's lives. I, for one, very much appreciate it, and, and I am certain that your growing number of channel members feel the same. Wow, well, uh, you know, that is, it, that's very humbling. Um, thank you so much indeed. Your level-headed com comments in recent days with regard to COVID-19 have been really welcome. The world is going mad, and it's nice to have a friendly voice or reason to help us realise we're not alone. Um, there is an end to this, and we all need to look out for one another. Indeed, we do, and uh, you will never walk alone, folks. Um, so, um, something I've picked up from Twitter today, QF36, which is currently airborne, uh, Singapore, I believe, to Melbourne, could well be Richard de Crespigny's last flight. Qantas are grounding their 380s at the end of the month uh, till at least the end of May, and this and his license will expire on the 22nd of May. Wondered if you might give him a shout out at some point, maybe after flying resumes and we see a QF380 landing at London Heathrow again, as the guy matches our very own Captain Dave in terms of his ability to bring aviation to the people. True flying legends, as they all are. Thank you so much. I've flown Qantas to Oz a few times via Singapore and Dubai and love those big aircraft. The Dreamliner back to Perth last year was fun as well. 17 hours, love it. Wow. Um, how many can, people can say that they spent 17 hours on an aeroplane uh, and enjoyed it. Well, I have to say, um, you know, it is quite interesting because, uh, you know, if you prepare for a long haul flight, oh, yeah, can I just say, John Thurman, thank you so much for that. And again, uh, a big shout out uh, to Richard de Crespigny. Um, I, I do hope I've uh, pronounced your, right, your name right there, Richard, um, but all the very best for the future. And uh, hopefully you'll keep flying. Uh, soon, I think they're uh, like you say they're drowning their uh, their fleet in the foreseeable future. Um, as you can see, Qantas, one of the Qantas fleet, 380s, I believe that is parked up on remote stand in a place where we would not normally see them. It has to be said. Normally, if you remember, the 346s with Virgin were parked up in that position. Got a. Um, I've got a rogue arrival on the uh, right-hand runway uh, coming in any moment now. But John Thurman, thank you so much. Uh, very kind words. Oh, he's here on this feed, is he? Oh, there he is. There we are, John Thurman. Thank you. Good to see you on YouTube. Good to see you here, my friend. 
stay safe, stay strong with everybody else as well. Uh, Got to say, new member, Siddharth uh, Dakota, uh, good day to you. Uh, Melissa D, welcome to First Class. And Jane Chapman, really, you didn't have to. Um, really, really, Jane. Um, that's that's great to hear that you've had uh, you've had uh, recovery from uh, from cardiac surgery. Um, obviously, uh, people in these in these circumstances are still at risk, and and, and just stay safe, Jane. Um, I would like to say, folks, please try and save your money. It's it's you know it's um, it's very uh, it's very humbling that you guys are supporting me so much, but support each other as well, and support your friends and family uh, in these times. It's very much uh, needed. Wow, Gray Phillips, 45 to 53 80s with Emirates may be grounded soon. It, it really is absolutely insane. And we're just hoping, we're waiting for that day, folks, aren't we? Where the news is good. We're waiting for that good news, you know, um, a, 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 a severe re a reduction in uh, in cases. Uh, one of my one of my good friends. I was on the phone to him either yesterday or the day before. Most distressed. Um, he was very concerned uh, because he was. He's a very good friend of mine. Uh, I know quite a lot of people in the in the in the, in the movie industry, uh, and he's um, he's um, unfortunately been laid off. Um, as a freelancer, there's so many freelancers out there, and uh, my best wishes to all of you guys in that industry who've um, who've unfortunately uh, lost their employment uh, for the time being. It's uh, again, I have to say, these are temporary measures that uh, production companies are taking, where they're having to lay off uh, staff due to the fact that they uh, they don't have any more productions to put out there, but. Um, one thing he did say, which I had to actually put him right on, was uh, you know him saying, well, you know there were 450 new cases that were uh, that were reported yesterday in London. Well, the thing is that what you've got to appreciate, folks, is that testing is currently going on day by day. So those 450 cases will be, um, you know, just an accumulation of test results that have come through of people. Um, uh, 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 testing positive so that's come from test results over time it's not like 450 people have walked into a doctor's surgery in one day and they've all been uh, um, uh, tested positive these are test results that have come in over a period of time and uh, and so you know the accumulative numbers um, so and, and of course a high percentage of those people will um, recover uh, there was a there was a great uh, message that I read out yesterday from a from a from a doctor in London who uh, who had to um, self isolate with her husband um, after contracting uh, the virus uh, and she's now fit uh, back to normal. Is that uh, Qatar's 350 coming out? I think it is. Oh, Paul Stringer, come on, man. Oh, mate, honestly, guys, please, please put it towards local charities, um, put it towards, um, you know, please, guys, you know, we're, I really appreciate your, your donations, but if you get the opportunity, it's, it's very easy to just go online and donate to the local um, the local children's charity or the elderly or uh, or, 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 or animal home or, or anything but just please guys you know because this money uh, you've got to appreciate this money goes into 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 Google and obviously you know they take their cut from it as well so you know I really appreciate it I really do appreciate it um, but uh, in, in times like these it would be it would be great if, if those if those if that money could be um, uh, uh, put to use with um, with charities charitable organisations who are very much in need of uh, of that at the moment. So I will take this money and um, uh, uh, what's left of it, because obviously, as you can appreciate, you know, Google and YouTube take their cut and their different platforms, um, and then I will. Uh, 
I can uh, I can put that out on donations. So thank you so much, folks. Really appreciate it. Paul Stringer, you're a star, saving money on diesel and travel because he's obviously self isolated at home or working from home. Uh, there's the wing tip on the 330. Very much like the 747, same angle. But we've got to all be, folks, haven't we? That wartime spirit, innit? So we'll have a little sing-song down the pub, but we can't, can we? Is that a... Uh... Oh, that's that Qatar 350 taxiing out. Sorry, folks, I'm just switching out the... Uh... The, uh, the angle, fork angle, fork handles please, there we go, no, fork handles, yeah there you go, fork handles, no fork handles, Unless I've, unless, unless I've missed it, uh, quite surprised to have not seen Richard Branson come out and um, Ali Pup, welcome to economy, Ali Pup. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit surprising that Branson, you know, one of the richest men in the world, uh, has not come out and just said, "Look, guys, to his, to, even if it's a private." personal message to his to his uh, crews um, to all the people that work so hard at Virgin Atlantic and who are really about to hit or or even hitting um, uh, uh, very hard times at the moment um, giving them at least some kind of assurance uh, that they are working as hard as they can to um, to help and they will do everything that they can within their power to help um, any kind of assurance from the person that runs an organisation, uh, you know, can only be seen as a positive thing. Even if he gets, uh, you know, gets bombarded with uh, with questions that he's really unable to answer. But somebody like Branson, who's a kind of the kind of guy who's sort of like, you know, um, doesn't rely on advisors and stuff like that. Well, I wouldn't have thought so anyway. He's a kind of like, uh, you know, got a geezer that started a, a business from a phone box. 
Um, he's, he's fallen on hard times many times himself. So he knows what it's like to scrape the bottom of the barrel. So really, I would have said uh, he should uh, come on um, in some way. Uh, I'll invite him on here if, he's, if he wants to, uh, just to, um, just to reassure uh, the people that work so hard to earn him his money, um, if you know what I mean. K Drive 23 has thrown um, on hold with BA donation 747. I like that. Oh, it's Christian, is it? Is that Christian Steingrant? Oh, right. Okay, Christian, thank you. Uh, is Christian home and back in town now or uh, a new member there? Uh, Graham Marshall, welcome to first class, Graham. Uh, Joe Smith telling us Alitalia Rogue. Uh, so we're just waiting for the uh, Qatar. Uh, as you can see, folks, normally. The, uh, the aircraft would taxi all the way down Sierra. Uh, but obviously, uh, because there are now aircraft parked up on Sierra for storage with Virgin Atlantic, um, that Qatar 350 having to make uh, uh, um, a um, intersect departure, but that won't have a problem because obviously, you know, these aircraft are extremely light at the moment. Uh, probably got more weight in terms of belly cargo than uh, than, than passengers, I would have thought. Uh, Dan Quintin, Qatar 350, departing for Doha now. In fact, that is her right there. Um, Dave Carrington, where are most of the pa BA planes being stored? Dave, both here at Heathrow, uh, at Cardiff as well. And, um, well, uh, Gatwick, I would imagine that there will be a, uh, they have a, they have a hangar, uh, a, a maintenance facility down at Gatwick. So I'd imagine a number of aircraft will be parked up down there. But I, I, I should imagine that um, as things progress, it may be that things will get a little bit crazier here uh, in terms of the storage of aircraft here, because obviously there will be a few more spaces available down there. But I uh, don't know, uh, Dave, if you saw the, um, the little walkthrough that I did just now was uh, to show uh, the 747s that are parked up around the other side to my right. Um, skies are obviously very quiet here at the moment. Uh, afterwards, after this show, folks, we're going to be doing a um, Concorde. Uh, we're going to be rerunning our show that we uh, brought to you, brought to our members live from Brooklands here in the UK with the Concorde. Now, this is warts and all, folks. Um, it basically is as raw as it comes. So, um, you know, we had some mic issues at the beginning when we started the interviews. Um, you will see. Um, 6Y JJK, uh, 10 euros. If Finna get a 600 million bailout, I can't begrudge Big Check TV a lousy tenner. Oh, you're a life legend. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, Joe Cameron, thank you very much indeed. Some very kind words coming from you guys at the moment. Really appreciate it. Um, John Furman getting some love there, uh, speaking out for his good friend, or, or, or sorry, not a good friend of his, it's not a friend of his, it's just, just read it on Twitter uh, about this uh, long-standing 380 captain with Qantas, and um, well, we'll have to keep, we'll have to keep eyes on that, and hopefully um, next time we see a Qantas 380 going out, we'll, uh, we'll dedicate it to him. Tony Bagman, 27 right, 09 right, 27 left, I'm, uh, 27 right, 09, that's 27 left, 09 right, isn't it? It's going to have BA aircraft parked, so the rumours are led to believe. I think that's 27 right, 09 left, uh, but without wanting to sound uh, in any way anal about that, Tony Bagman, but yes, indeed, 27 left, uh, uh, 27 right, sorry, is going to be the runway where... Uh, the storage of aircraft are going to be and that will be a sight to see I have to say and I will bring that to you um, BA Boeing 777 India Bravo just passing my window inbound for Cardiff Ian Finlay saying 
Wow, there you go. We just hit 3,300 members there. Bang. Patin, uh, thank you guys for supporting uh, us here on Big Jet TV. Uh, really appreciate it. Of course, as soon as things are back to normal, we'll be booking up flights for international trips. Um, and by then, we'll have Anchorage on the cards. That's going to be a great show, Anchorage, because they're waiting for us to come there. Uh, and that's where you're going to see uh, a 747 um, taxiing out, a, a big... 747-8 uh, freighter with a DC-3 in front of it. That's the kind of stuff um, you're going to see. Okay, here we go. tips of the wings are where most of the flex occurs on the 350. Just continuing that, uh, that upward flex. I think they have to uh, maintain a uh, 4,000 foot corridor, would stay within a 4,000 foot corridor uh, before they uh, reach their second, get their hand over um, to the next stage of their flight. Well, there we go, folks. Okay, so uh, let us now, um, what we're going to do now is we've got a show coming for you, uh, members, of course, um, which is, uh, let's just double check. Let me just, heart 2384, welcome to executive. Okay, let me just lock out on that. Um, and uh, Dino City, welcome to executive as well. Bit of a scary picture there. <laughs> Richard Sinnott, Craig Turner. Um, Craig Turner saying quite a few BA baby buses stored at Glasgow. Yes, indeed. Wow. Uh, Ian Finley, Mark Sanderson. Um, Dino City was supposed to be flying out to lovely Florida next month, but this will have to do. Happy to support the channel and all the great work you do. Dino City, thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Uh, so that was a little lot in Brea that just went out. David Taylor, Shung Hum Kim. Uh, hello, Jerry. Good morning and hello to everybody here on Big Jet TV. Um, Mark Klaus, John Glenn Griffith. Uh, just what the doctor ordered, Jody Anderson. Um, wow. Jody Anderson saying that that plane, I, I'd imagine that she's talking about the, um, the 350, has less than 30 days in the air. So there's every possibility that we would have seen that aircraft um, at Toulouse on one of our shows. Don't forget, as a, a member on Big Jet TV, as a first class and up M member, um, once we resume uh, our activities, we will obviously be uh, flying out to um, different destinations around the world and taking our executive members there to view it with us. So uh, really looking forward to that, of course. Um, uh, Kevin Carter, no, we haven't, uh, which is a good thing, I have to say. Um, well, Kevin, I'd say the nearest to uh, an incident would have to be the Dreamliner. 
uh, at London Heathrow, the, the um, go around uh, that we experienced here at, um, at London Heathrow. Um, Patrick Green, good morning from East Texas. Gaz Robs, Dublin Airports looks like a, t a ghost town, to be honest. Wow. 33 Blackpool, uh, Blackpool, sorry. Remember, it's not all bad. The earth is enjoying the break. Pollution levels are dramatically reduced. You could, you have to, yeah, you can throw a positive spin on it in that light, most definitely, uh, Blackpool. Uh, Paul MK, oh, get down to the pub, Jerry. I won't be going down to the pub, son, but thank you so much, uh, Paul. Really appreciate that. A rum and Coke. Uh, mini Line, uh, Mine Lynn, uh, welcome to Economy. Uh, Kevin Carter, Davina too, Cecil Masters, uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, so folks, yes, what we're going to do now is we're going to do two shows for you this afternoon. One is the uncut live show that we did from Brooklands. Now this is basically um, um, a couple of years ago now, I think, uh, or very early part of last year, um, or the latter part of the previous year, one of the two. Um, where we did a live show from Brooklands with, um, is it uh, golf, isn't it? Victor, was it Echo Golf or Golf Echo or um, uh, with with the uh, with the Concord Test Bed? Yeah. Um, anyway, so what we're doing is we're going to bring you the live show raw and uncut as it happened, as it unfolded. Uh, but just bear in mind, it is, like I say, warts and all. A and Z about Jerry. Steve H. Uh, not seeing the uh, New Zealand jet in just yet, but uh, she may be hiding down there somewhere at T2. Uh, I'm not sure. However, right, so um, let me just... Uh, Talk to the animals. Your mic, GP. Uh, just stand by. Hold on a minute. Copy. Okay, so here's the plan, folks. For your afternoon's entertainment, we are going to put together, uh, we're going to uh, stream live. Um, it's like a premiere, so uh, you're going to be able to chat on it, uh, interact. Uh, I'll be there, obviously. Um, you need to give me half an hour to get back to base uh, to break, it, break it down, uh, break everything down, uh, and then we'll go live. Within probably uh, let's if we say if we say by half past four uh, this afternoon would that work um, so you can get yourselves ready um, get the kids back from school I guess uh, I don't know what's going on there um, but um, welcome to everybody and thank you very much for watching we'll be back with you for the Concord show 
um, which is basically a show that we did a couple of years ago at Brooklands where they have one of the test bed aircraft. Now this aircraft um, was was broken down and shipped there and reassembled and uh, put back into what looks like operational order. It is a fantastic um, insight into what these guys do um, uh, at, at many museums around the country and in fact around the world uh, for restoring aircraft not so much back into flying condition but uh, more into sort of like um, condition so that the uh, so that the folks can come and walk around it and have a look at it so it's like a it's like a preserved museum so to speak so inside the aircraft they've got part of the seating in there they've got um, uh, 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 um, uh, images and footage and all that kind of stuff on board it now Bear in mind that this is a very raw live feed because obviously when you're in, on a live feed and you're on your own, you don't have a director with you, you don't have any sort of like sound crews with you, you've got nobody. All I've got is myself, the equipment, uh, I've got Jilly in my ear. Uh, she will obviously um, uh, tell me if there are any issues in terms of uh, audio. Now you're going to experience that uh, right at the beginning of this show. Um, oh. You're going to experience that right at the beginning of this show. Uh, so uh, it's not a problem with your... Uh, it's not a problem with your... Beautiful sound, man. Wow, really? We won't see it, though. We won't see it. Highly unlikely we'll see it because she'll... Uh, but I, I can see her tail. I'll grab it. I'll, just, I'll, I'll keep an eye on it, just in case she she comes out over here. Um, so so that so you're going to see the whole show uncut, literally as a live piece. So you're going to be see a lot of like bumping and scraping and you know mingling and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but basically, then after that show, I'm going to show you the um, the edited uh, version of of the Concord show so you can see how we take a live show and then convert it uh, with everything that we've got by using stock footage etc uh, etc et um, and uh, put that together as an edited piece now bear in mind also here she comes now let's just grab this hold on silk to the animals that's quite rare folks Croatian 320 319. Star Alliance, Croatian Star Alliance 319. Wow. That's a rare old bird, isn't it? So she'll just uh, she'll turn her, she'll make the right hand turn and come towards us, I'd imagine. So we will get to see her. So of course there's a lot of um, a lot of folks will look at this and go, well it's not very interesting, is it? But there's a lot of people who watch Big Jet TV who are avid plane spotters. And they will, uh, they will make probably notes in their books about uh, seeing this aircraft uh, on Big Jet TV, uh, maybe in brackets after it, seen on Big Jet TV live, uh, and then maybe they'll get to see it one day in their travels uh, and see it in the flesh, so to speak, uh, when they go plane spotting at an airport. Come on, son! Oh, there may be people on here right now who say, I've seen that. I've actually seen that. Turn of the bike are saying uh, that uh, there's a museum in Germany that has a Concorde under Concorde ski. Uh, is that a uh, is that a, a replica or is that an actual? Um, that's a very interesting uh, interesting concept indeed. Um, that was the Russian one, wasn't it? It's the Russian one with a ma and it just the 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 the, the tup tuple of tu. One three four or one four four. There we go. Um, uh, crazy looking thing. The Russians uh, back in the days when they um, when they were copying, uh, really copying uh, Boeing and, uh, and 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 other aircraft manufacturers. Um, uh, 
incredible looking machines it has to be said very cumbersome and very sort of like um uh, uh didn't look like they they should be able to fly and of course konkolski being one of those that um they do like to go big it has to be said the russians have made some incredible freighter jets in the past and still continue uh to uh, uh, um, um, develop um new types of aircraft and of course uh the uh, il-76 being one of them um and of course uh, the an-124 the an-225 um, and so on and so forth. But anyway, listen, folks, well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do a show now, which is all about Concorde, uh, a walk around the aircraft itself. We also went on the working simulator at uh, Brooklands as well, um, which was very enlightening, um, very eye-opening, it has to be said. Very basic graphics, very basic systems that they've got there. Um, but even so, it, uh, it still looks fantastic. Hold on a second. Taxi out for departure, is it? We'll have to wait for that. And there it is, the Jambo Jet in from uh, Nairobi, no doubt. Kenya Airways. Anyone still up in New Zealand? Well, actually, I say still up. It's bleeding. Uh, it's Saturday morning in uh, New Zealand by now, isn't it? Shelf to the animal. Um, yeah. Same Easy on the old uh, trigger happy there, son. All of the um, all of the folks that uh, work up at Brooklands, most of them are volunteers. Uh, so they rely, as uh, as so many people, so many museums do, on people's contributions and donations. Um, and it was great to do a show with them up there. Uh, Fernando Governo, uh, welcome to first class, Fernando. Good to see you here. Anthony Lee Rach, S75. Uh, bless my country, Kenya. Uh, there we go, S75. Uh, that's one of yours, is it, my friend? Uh, good to see you here. And indeed, um, great to see uh, that aircraft still operational for the time being. Uh, Bimman Bangladesh Airlines 787 9 inbound. Uh, that coming from Dan Quinton. Um, of course, there is a. Uh, CA338. What's that? Yeah. Majority of it's what? Okay, right, yeah. Uh, Jamie Reese saying, hey Jerry, I've heard uh, Bournemouth are getting um, at least 40 aircraft from BA for storage this weekend, possibly on Sunday. Wow. 
So that, does that mean that we're going to see a significant amount of aircraft going out of London Heathrow um, this weekend? I mean, you've got to feel for the airline industry massively. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's madness. A loss of revenue on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, with these uh, with these guys, uh, is just insane. Which is why, like a gay, uh, like I say, going back to uh, the likes of Richard Branson, you know, he's going to be struggling as well. So you know, he needs to just mention that you know he's there with everybody, you know, struggling as a whole. Uh, don't bury your head in the sand, son. John Collier, you could maybe do a show at one of the airports inspecting all those inbounds for storage. That would be sight, seeing them come into relatively small airports. You know what? That might be an idea. What's the what's the spotting opportunities uh, down at Bournemouth? That might be an idea. Do something down at Bournemouth on Sunday. How about that? Hey? Uh, Ken Newbury tuning in from San Francisco. Uh, of course, this time last week, Ken. Uh, well, we were in LAX this time last week, but we were due to be heading out. Oh, actually, no. Uh, yes, no, we were in LAX this time last week, um, but um, we would be due to head out to San Francisco uh, in the coming hours, of course. And uh, very good afternoon, good morning to you, uh, John Britton. Yes, indeed, rear has been cancelled. Uh, locomotive um, Iberia 346 back in again. We're just going to wait for this... Uh, Air New Zealand. Um, so there we are. Is that Bimmons Dreamliner we just seen come in? I think that might have been the one we saw flying in the air show as well. I think they've only got one with a 787 uh, icon on the side of it. Clean looking jet, man. It's like a BA380 coming out. Ah, oh, Craig and Aiden. Thank you very much indeed. Any joy that we can bring to people, just uh, it's a good opportunity. It's more so for bringing the community together uh, that I get a kick out of this, to be honest with you love my aviation um, and it's always good to film it but um, to bring you guys and girls together especially in hard times like this is what's really important to me squall bone triple seven uh, air china triple seven this is air new zealand's uh, this is the is this potentially the uh, penultimate flight, isn't it? Potentially the last flight to Los Angeles for Air New Zealand. Tomorrow, uh, of course, could potentially be uh, the final flight. They brought the L All Blacks in tomorrow. Oh, great, Jamie Reese! Thank you for that. Um, yeah, well, if they're uh, if they're, can you, can you just can you check that?
No, uh, school it. it uh, if anything, it will um, it will uh, 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 create a, a, a back a, 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 a massive um, uh, uh, over. Um, uh, certainly won't in any way um, create a, a, a shortage of pilots um, because obviously all these pilots are going to be uh, they're going to be it's going to be incre increase the availability of pilots um, but let's let's be honest again I have to say you know uh, the likes of Virgin Atlantic uh, and British Airways they, 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 they may be asking their uh, crews to take unpaid leave which is horrendous you know um, under the circumstances because you would have thought that they would have a contingency budget in place with these airlines you know to to cover certain uh, circumstances like these I know it's unprecedented but at the same time you know you would have thought that they would um, uh, be able to give some sort of financial support um, but obviously it's a considerable amount of money and that's where obviously the airline industry is looking to the government to help with bailouts uh, and so on and so forth but we'll see how that all plays out um, but these these air crews are still going to be in employment um, but it just means they're not going to be flying and not earning any money which is a which is a crying shame it has to be said uh, thank you, Craig and Aidan. Very much appreciate it. Classic Airlines. Rafik Trains. Uh, oh no, Biman have two 787s and a Boeing 787-8. Uh, two 787-9s and four 787-8s. All have the 787 logo on them, Rafik Trains. Thank you uh, for uh, clearing that up. Appreciate it. Uh, Anthony Lee Wrench, yeah, that's off to LAX. That uh, that beautiful um, so we've got a row. Uh, Dale Ann Harsh, yes, uh, it, another story would be uh, great to see that. The only problem with that is access. Uh, none of these airlines want anybody showing their aircraft up close and uh, so on and so forth. Um, it, is, uh, it is something that's uh, very sort of like there's a lot of, uh, unless of course it's an aircraft that's in storage from a lease company and the lease company is very happy for us to film it. But generally when it involves an airline that has markings on it, um, it's very difficult to uh, be a great show to do, of course. But I think that Bournemouth uh, show might be uh, an interesting one to cover. See how aero breaks that. Sarah Mexico, right? Mexico. Okay, I think uh, Beerman is going to uh, cross the active um, for the Emirates 380 comes out. Uh, Gaz the dude. Uh, good afternoon to you, Reginald Trump. What's that, Reginald? So many comments, man. Uh, Keith Grafton. Yes, they are. Uh, they are indeed asking. Um, I'd say a very high percentage of their um, crews to take unpaid leave for two months. Uh, speaking to a friend of mine the other day. Uh, no names, no pack drills, but uh, he hasn't received his April roster. Uh, that's something that he would have received by now. So obviously, uh, doesn't look like he's going to have any work for a couple of uh, for a couple of months. 
um, and he's a uh, he's a pilot. He's a captain. If you're out there, mate, um, hope you're doing well, fella. And I'll give you a call later, as it happens, because we're working on a little something on a little edit together. Seven. Okay, here we go. BA. Uh, so where's she headed? LAX, San Fran, Boston. Wouldn't be Boston, would it? I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought. Wow, Peter Woodward was on that Air New Zealand a couple of months ago. Where's it at? Pharmaceuticals. Look at this beautiful, gracious A380. Right then, folks, that's it. We'll see you in, um, hopefully, around about half an hour for the Concorde show. Stay tuned. Look out on your phone. Uh, you might not get. Uh, remember, you know how, um, um, you know, um, oh, okay, okay, okay. It's just that I, I wanted to. No, no, that's fine, that's fine. Pilot Triss is in the house. Good day, Pilot Triss. Hope you're well. Um, obviously, um, Triss going to be uh, suffering at the moment, I'd imagine. Um, anyway, Mike Smith, uh, Tech Design. Beast in the sky! Uh, what's the hole for in the tail end of the planes, Joe Brown? Good question. That's the APU, the uh, auxiliary power unit. Uh, which basically um, is a small little jet engine. Um, well, I say small; it's actually about the size of a, about half the size of a mini. Um, which basically um, controls. They start that up. It basically runs uh, on the ground. Um, it, it basically gives power to the engines uh, to start up the systems and the hydraulics and the, uh, the electronics and so on and so forth on board the aircraft. Um, it's called the APU. If you uh, look that up, Alpha Papa Uniform. Look that up on Google, my friend, and you'll be able to um, uh, thank you, Locomotive. Uh, thank you to everybody. <laughs> Little emojis are great, aren't they? Right, we're going to have another go at this. <laughs> About half an hour ago, I was supposed to be going, wasn't it? Okay. I tell to the animals. Hey, look, I know I'm, supposed, I know, I know I'm not, not supposed to do this, folks, but let me give you a big hug. Yeah, come in. There you go, there you go. You're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Uh, and uh, Branson, talk to your people. Talk to your people, Mr. Branson. Uh, no excuse, it has to be said. God bless you, Blair, me, I really do dip me lurky. Um, but other than that, uh, Folks, we'll see you shortly for the Concord Show. A lot of people have asked for this. Uh, don't forget, it's warts and all, guys. So you're going to get a little bit... No, I'm just... 
doing it purposefully. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, you're gonna uh, you're gonna get a little bit of mic drop out and all that kind of stuff. But just bear in mind that uh, it's all done live, so there's very little you can do when you're live. You just got to keep the wheels turning. Uh, so, and after that, we will then put up the uh, the final edited version where we uh, where, where we just see it's all clean. So, uh, catch you in a little while, folks. I'll, it, it, it's 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 only joking. Uh, I'll see you in a bit. All right, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> the sound <laughs> for God's sake. <laughs>